basically in fluids, uh, whether it's air or water, and the fluids living in us. And moreover, fluids affects the way we move. So, of course, birds and uh, fish understand that very well. And so do we when we row or swim or occasionally if you have the opportunity to sail. Now, not only us, but pr pretty much all the living species living in water, as small as a bacterium or as big as a whale. So bacterium, for example, swim in water, and the way they swim is sort of like we swim in molasses. And uh, well, of course, you've seen them. They are one of the uh, most efficient swimmers, and birds and insects. So all of these living species depend on their interaction with fluids to travel from place to places. Now, among all of them, and I would vote for insects to be one of the most acrobatic uh, 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 athletes in such a sport. And indeed, they are most populous as well. It's about uh, more than a million species of them. And it doesn't matter what the colors they are, and what forms they have, they all are all able to stay in a loft. And also, they can accelerate to dart, to fly backwards, and as well as to hover. So what I like to do first is to tell you a little bit about one of my most favorite insects, and that's dragonfly. And you normally see them in summer, and uh, this is a close look at them, and this is during the hovering. A dragonfly is beating their wings up and down and uh, in their pursuit of a prey or mate. And so dragonflies is considered to be one of the most maneuverable insects, but the, nonetheless, they're shrouded by a sense of mystery, just like bumblebees, and uh, they've been denied to the rights to fly, according to some crude theoretical calculations. Now, I would like to do first... <laughs> is you to give you a sense what a theorist could possibly get wrong with a piece of paper and a pencil. And I will show you with a piece of paper. So I'm going to drop this piece of paper, a Xerox paper anyone can get. I'll let it drop. And here's a bookmark you can get from bookstores. And here's a playing card. I'll drop it again. So each of them drop sort of in a seemingly unpredictable way. And that is, I can tell you now where this piece of, the next piece of paper is going to land, even though I try to make it to uh, land, say, here and there. So what this, the trajectory of the piece of paper is an indication of when a dragonfly wing experiences when they try to fly in air. That is, when this piece of paper moves in air, what it does is to push the air around, and in turn, the air pushes the back. So what you don't see here is this highly intricate motion of uh, the, fluid mo uh, the fluid motion sort of induced by the motion of this piece of paper, and in turn, they push it back. So this is a highly coupled system. Now, in order to understand the trajectory of, of this piece of paper, or the forces on a dragonfly wing, what one really needs to get understand is the exact motion of fluid around this piece of paper. Now, that's not something a pencil and a paper can do, and therefore, since we, the only thing we know is the airfoil theory, we say, well, let's ignore all that and assume the force on this piece of paper is sort of like the force on the airfoil. And not surprisingly, you get an answer. It's not quite satisfying. So in order to get the right story, trying to predict the right forces, what we need to do, in fact, is to take a close look at the, for, uh, the fluid flow around this piece of wing. And that's what I'm going to get to uh, next. And before that, we should take 
the first thing we have to do is now really look very closely exactly how the wing moves, and therefore we can understand the response of the fluid to that piece of wing.